guys it's your girl Bridget Epo. welcome back to Body Boy TV if it's your first time thank you very much for joining me and if you're a returning subscriber thank you very much for coming to watch today I thank you all for all your likes and your comments and um, yeah thanks for stopping by today um, I'm still in Spain and uh, today I want Whenever I travel, I do a lot of blogs because I think it's just an opportunity for me to record as much as I can because obviously when I'm at home, I'm so busy because I've got work, I've got the family, I've got cooking, cleaning, shopping, or whatnot that I do. Um, my days are booked up basically from I've been on YouTube friend. for one whole year now. Hooray! <laughs> yeah, so it's been one whole year of being on YouTube and uh, yeah. It's been a very interesting journey and so I've been here, you know, that I YouTube in my mid 40s. So I have learned quite a lot in the one year that has gone past and I wanted to share with you guys today seven lessons that I've learned being on YouTube. So seven lessons that I've learned on YouTube I want to share with you today. So I'm just going to be looking down on my phone because I have the points written down so that I don't forget. So yeah, the first lesson I've learned from doing YouTube is believe in yourself. You've got to believe in yourself. I can't even, I can't overestimate it. Because if you don't believe in yourself, no one is gonna believe in you. I know we tell our children all the time, believe in yourself, believe in yourself, have confidence in yourself. But the truth is that we use you because, especially because it's this kind of environment whereby the camera is facing you and you're talking to people. If you don't believe in yourself and you doubt yourself or you don't have confidence, it's going to come across. People will read your body language and they will quickly know that you know, you're know you not a confident person. Some people, confidence does not come to them naturally. They have to develop it. They have to grow it. But for other people, confidence, they've been, I mean, very confident on their lives because maybe because of the number of jobs or the kind of jobs that they do. They are confident in communication and, you know, relating with people, which is basically what YouTube is. You are relating and connecting with people even though he's in a virtual world so you got to believe in yourself believe in what you're doing if you have a particular area that you're talking about whatever issues that you're talking about believe in it and you know just trust you trust trust the process or trust <laughs> trust yourself and believe in yourself and be confident in whatever you're doing knowing that you know because when i started honestly i was sharing this with uh, my sister today that i didn't i didn't believe that one person will even want to hear what i'm saying like what am i even saying that anybody will want to hear but when i get these emails and this comment from people saying oh it's like it's me you're talking about i can connect with you you think like me i can relate to you it's just i mean it just made me know that there are people out there who actually think like me so those people will continue to watch me so yeah so i'm happy about that so you've got to believe yourself in whatever you're doing not just youtube Anything in life that you want to do, any venture at all that you want to do, business or whatever, any new thing that you want to set in that you have doubts, you've got to believe in yourself because if you don't believe in yourself, then your chances of, you know, probably succeeding or making it work is going to be very limited. Two, passion is key. Love it. Passion is key. Love whatever it is that you're doing, not for the money, but love, genuine love. Look, People to all the time I see people talk about passion that they are passionate about this They are passionate about this. I'm passionate about quite a few things if I can say that I have a few passions in my life And you know when I say as when I became a, a social worker I thought okay, this is my calling for life because this is what I want to do I just want to make a difference in this area I want to you know work with people you know to help them make a difference in their daily lives so I never knew that you know this is this this platform is waiting for I just me started it like a joke and you know from nowhere it's like growing and you know because the main reason why i started doing youtube if i can be honest with you i think i mentioned it a couple of my videos is because i'm passionate about the things that i talk about and that's why sometimes when i'm talking about issues especially nigeria issues you see all the passion in my face i am so serious i am breathing fire and bright stone and all that you know the passion is there and apart from you know just believing in what I'm saying or being passionate about what I'm doing here on YouTube. You know, the things I talk about is things that I really, really, um, I care about. I care deeply about the things I care that, That's why if you wake me up in the middle of the night and just put camera on my face, I will, and just, I will start talking. It's, it comes so easy to, with me. That's why anywhere that I go to, in the airport, in the restaurant, everywhere, I can just on my camera and start recording. 
I'm just passionate about it. I'm passionate about it. I mean, a, a couple of you have picked up on that, the passion because of how, you know, it's been growing and everything has been happening around my YouTube. If you're not passionate about it, you're doing it for money. You will get tired. I've been on YouTube one year and I have not earned one dime. I have not earned one dime. You know, I recently got monetized, but I still haven't seen any paycheck from YouTube yet. I don't know how long that one is going to take, but I don't really mind. I keep uploading because I am passionate about it. I mean, the passion is so strong that sometimes when I'm at work, I'm thinking of, you know, closing quickly so that I can go home and go and edit my video and upload. That is all I care about. I am so passionate about it. I, have, I mean, I can't wait to just put this camera in front of me and be recording. It's like, this is what I live for now. Honestly, even my family, they are suffering from it because they just say, this is all you do. Every time my husband is complaining, all you do is editing. All you do is, uh, you don't cook the way you used to cook before. You know, this thing has just taken over my life. The passion is so strong. I have to be controlling it pulling it in that okay let me not upload too much let me not rocket too much let me give you guys some break you know yeah you've got to be passionate about it. if you're not passionate about it you're doing it for money or you're doing it because you want to be famous or you're doing it for any other motive you will get tired though because it's not possible for you to keep doing this when you don't have any money from it it's not a business that you say okay the money is going to come immediately or you have a turnover quickly it's just it's a labor of love that's the way i see it but if you have the passion, like I do, then you keep doing it. So for those of you who have a passion for whatever you want to do, if it's YouTube or any business, go out there. As long as you are passionate about it, the passion will come across and people will buy into that dream. That's the, what I feel. Third one, your message is not for your circle. Not everyone will believe in your message. Hmm. This is a quite a serious one. Um, I'm just... I'm learning this. I'm learning this because this is what happened when I wanted to start YouTube. I did a video where it was just like a play video. I wasn't even serious about it. I just did it with my son. And then, you know, I sent it to a few friends and some, you know, some of my colleagues. And they were like, ah, preacher, you can definitely do it. You will see you, you can do it. Then one of my colleagues said, oh, I had a dream about you and I saw that you're doing this thing successfully. I'm like, ah, can we please don't start. This is a joke. I, I don't mean it. I'm not going to do it. You know, but. It's, some people saw it and they believed it in and they were like, oh, you can do this. But some people, hmm, hmm, till today, one year in, some people just feel like I'm wasting my time. Like, I don't know what I'm doing. As a matter of fact, when I went to Nigeria the other time, one of my friends was laughing. When I told her, and we were talking about YouTube, and she was like, ah, I see some of your videos. She was laughing. She was like, ah, you're really taking this thing seriously. That thing helped me. Honestly, she laughed. This is something that I'm passionate about. I'm driven by it and I'm doing it very seriously. I'm putting all my time, my resources and everything into it. And you claim to be my friend eh? and you are laughing, you know. But what it has taught me is that it's not everybody that will buy into your dream. Not everybody will see it. You know, it reminds me of the story of Joseph. When Joseph had a dream and it's, what God showed him was that he was going to be the head of his family. He told his brothers, because God did not open their eyes to see that same vision with him. You know what they did? Mm -hmm. All of you, you know, you know your Bible. He was sold into slavery, not knowing, they thought they were going to sell him so that, you know, that dream would not come to pass. Not knowing that they are actually helping him to actualize that dream that God has showed him. So, your dream, some people around you will not buy into it. Some people will not even believe you. What I did when I wanted to start, when I, I decided that, okay, I want to start blogging, was that I just went to my husband and I said, I showed him the video that I did. He was laughing. He said, what's this? I said, it's me. He said, ah. He started correcting my English because he's English, uh, English major. He said, I said, ah, Bridget, is this your pronunciation? You want to go and put yourself on YouTube? They will laugh at you. I said, don't worry. We're all Africans. It's African issues I'm talking about. He was laughing. You know, I explained to him. I said, well, this is what I want to do. I need your blessings. Once you believe in me, my children believe in me, I'm okay. Whoever does not believe, that is their cup of tea. You know, you guys know how I am. I'm, I'm, I'm straightforward. I don't have time for, you know, uh, you know. Mm -mm. And he said, okay. And that's it. I just prayed about it. And here we are today, one year on. So, sometimes your message is not for your immediate environment. If you have a dream, even sharing it to them, some people will kill your dream. Just sharing it with them. They will kill it because they don't believe in it. They cannot see it. But remember that it's not everybody that God has shown that dream. It's you. So you know what God has shown you. You know what is in your heart. You know what is in your head. So don't worry if people don't believe in your dream or they don't buy into it. I'm telling you. Some people, even some people who claim to be my friends, they claim to be my friends, even in London, they've not subscribed to this YouTube. They've not subscribed to my, this, my Obodo Yibo as 
popular as it is now. Um, everybody in London calls me Obodo Ibo now. Even people that will go to church together will be saying Obodo Ibo. I'll say, ah, you guys know my name now. Why are you calling me Obodo Ibo? You know. So sometimes your message is not for your circle, your people that surround you. It's from people out there. I get a lot of subscribers from America, people that will reach out to me, people that will send me money. Yeah, send me money from America. Ladies that will say, oh, Bridget, God sent you to me. It's me you are talking to. Sometimes when I get emails, I will be shocked. I'll be like, me? This me? This small me? Is me you are talking about? I don't, I don't really, you know, understand it because I'll just be looking. Then I realize that I'm just a tool in the hand of God. Whatever I'm saying, it's not me that is putting the words in my mouth. It's God that is speaking through me. So if I say anything meaningful and, you know, it resonates with you and it's helping you in any way, it's not me. All the glory goes to God and it's God that will take all the glory. I can never take any glory for myself because it's not me that is behind it. It is a calling, like I told you guys. And, you know, some people say, how do you get all these titles? How do you get all these titles? I get a lot of that question all the time. They say, how do you get all the titles? Then if I tell you guys how I get my title, you will not believe it. It is by revelation that I get all my titles. Sometimes I will just be baffing. The Holy Spirit will just drop it in my spirit. Talk about this. And if I talk about it, you will see the views. Sometimes I'll be having a conversation with somebody. I'll even hear something on TV. The Holy Spirit will just drop it in my spirit. Talk about it. The titles, most of the titles, even the ones that I sit down to come and think of, I want to formulate might not get views, but the one that God leads me through the Holy Spirit to talk about. Ha. So, if people don't believe in your dream, the point I'm trying to make, this one is very important. I'm, I'm stretching it a bit because I realize that there are some people that when you have a dream, people will kill it. And it's the people around you, your friends and family that will kill that dream because they don't believe in it. So they will talk you out of it. They will discourage you. And then you lose your motiv motivation to do that thing. But whatever it is that God has laid in your heart today, please, don't be discouraged. Your message might not be for people around you. It might be for people that are in China, Japan. You know, I get emails from people. Somebody from Australia put a comment that day and said, Oh, I love watching you. I'm in Australia. I'm like, what? Australia, Japan. <laughs> hey, this is me. In this small place that I am. Talking to you on this video. And somebody is watching me from Australia. You see, this is what God can do. So don't allow anybody to kill your dream. Whatever you want to do. As long as you have a conviction in your heart about it. God has laid it in your heart to do it. Just trust God and go ahead and do it. It will succeed by the grace of God. The fourth one. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. There's a lot of discouragement. Yeah. There's a lot of discouragement that will come. Whatever you want to do. This is a lesson that I'm learning now. I've learned it. I know it already. But I'm learning it now. Even on YouTube. That a lot of discouragement will come. You'll see some discouragement that you'll be wondering. Hey, who sent me a message? Why am I even doing this? You want to give up sometimes. You'll be like. Is it even worth it? Especially if you are not making money from it. I, I thought they say you make money from it. You've not made money one year or two years. I mean, one other YouTuber was mentioning the other day that she's been on YouTube for five years. And, you know, her channel just got monetized. You can imagine. If she didn't believe in what she's doing, then she would not be doing it. She would have just, you know, left it and you should go. She would have given up. It's easy to give up. Especially when the thing is not bringing you money. Because let's be honest. Most people who do things, they want to do it for financial reasons. Whatever you do, you want some kind of reward because let's be honest, a lot of time, energy, resources goes into whatever you want to do. E I these videos that I'm making. I put a lot of my resources in it. I bought camera, I bought a new laptop, I bought this, I bought that, I bought editing software. So many I mean I spent since the one year I've been, if I can be honest, for, since the one year I've been doing YouTube, I spent nothing less than a thousand five hundred pounds on you know this YouTube. And I haven't earned one dollar from it from YouTube. One pound I have not earned. So, what are we saying? Is that no discouragement? And that's why I was talking about passion, that you've got to be passionate about it. And then sometimes some people will come and abuse you. Some people who disagree with you will come and abuse you and curse the living daylight out of you. They will curse you out. <laughs> so, who are you? Who come across people like this, you'll be like, ah, can I take this? Can I take this? If you're somebody that is sensitive, you'll say, ah, no, this is too much. It, some people will just come to attack. It will be like a personal attack, like you know them in real life. You don't know them before, but because they disagree with what you are saying. And the thing about Africans is that most of us don't know how to disagree respectfully. So because I'm saying this thing now, you don't like it. You feel like I'm saying it wrongly or you don't believe in what I'm saying. It's not of you to just disagree and say, okay, I don't agree and go your own. No, it's abuse. If you see abusive comments, uh, you will run. <laughs> yeah. 
So sometimes it can be discouraging. You'll be wondering, then, why am I even doing this? Eh? After all, I have my job. It's not like I'm looking for work. So why am I even doing it? But again, it's the passion that will be moving you. So whatever it is that you're doing in life, if it's not, I mean, I'm not talking in the context of which I'm talking this point. It's not about you to be alone. Anything you're doing in life, discouragement is setting. It will come, but do not give up. Because if you give up, then you're not going to achieve what you wanted to achieve. But if you keep pushing and keep pressing, eventually you get to that destination that you wanted to get to. You know, discouragement or failures is just a stepping stone to get to where you are go going to get to eventually. Me, I believe that, you know, when God has ordained something, you will get there. It's just for you to be patient and not get discouraged because you need to keep picking yourself up even when there's discouragement and you keep pressing forward. Next one is speak your truth. <laughs> Speak your truth. Just speak your truth. I say this one, speak your truth, because people have things that they can speak as their truth or that they can relate to as their truth based on their own experiences or the experiences of people around them. But other people have different experiences that will inform their own perception of that same situation. So we don't always have the same, you know, experiences. Therefore, our opinions are going to differ. But this is the way I say it. You speak your own truth because you can only speak for yourself. You cannot speak for somebody else. So somebody else will come and say, oh, like I was talking about the issue of going to Nigeria, moving back to Nigeria. I said, well, my husband and I are not going to retire to Nigeria. I want to retire and remain in, in the UK. And somebody else came and said, oh, this is the best. Uh, going to Nigeria is the best thing that ever happened to me. That's your own truth. This is my own truth that I want to. But the problem comes when you want to force your truth on another person. And we Africans, we have a way of doing it. We have no respect for other people's, not everybody, but most people will come and tell you, what the rubbish are you talking about? How can you say that? I mean, this guy was breathing fire and rice stone. I'm teaching people the wrong thing. I'm telling people not to go back to their own country. Whatever you do, this is not your country. You will still go back. Oh, this is my country. This is my truth. I am remaining here. If you want to go, bye-bye, I'm not stopping you. But this is where I want to remain. So that's my truth. So sometimes when you speak your own truth, people will come and attack you for it. Because they don't like it. I don't know why. But you have your experiences, I have my experiences. This is what I want to do. It doesn't mean that you should do the same thing. I'm just saying from my own angle, from my own perspective, from my own experience, and going forward to my future, to my, you know, later, later life, this is what we want to do. So you don't have to do it. So continue to speak your own truth. Any issue at all. Any issue at all. You guys know I'm very passionate about the issues that I talk about. When I talk about Nigeria issues, I talk about, you know, Obodo Ibo issues. I talk about anything I talk about. I speak my truth. So just continue to speak your truth and be honest. That's another thing. Because I started hearing lately about how some YouTubers are coming to lie, you know, with all this DIY stuff that they are doing. How to make your tummy flat in two days. How to make your breast big in one hour. How to make your bum lifted in all those bullshit. I don't know. But just be honest and speak your truth because lies, they are like a pack of cards. You stack, stack, stack. By the time they come, come rolling down, you just like this. <laughs> They will just scatter. You will not be able to find your bearings. So speak your truth and be honest. That's all I'm going to say about that. The sixth one, be open-minded. Be open-minded. You learn that way. I mean, I have made some amazing friends on YouTube. I have met so many special people. Like some of them I've met. Some I haven't met. And, you know, I feel like I know them. Because of the way we've connected, I've learned so much. I mean, there are some regulars now, some, some people that come to my YouTube to comment that, you know, I've learned so much from them, especially on this issue that we keep talking about retirement and retirement and retirement, what to do if you live in the diaspora, retiring and all that. This woman came and just put this perfect explanation that I was reading it. I had to like, I copied it and I printed it because it made so much. So many people out there have so many beautiful ideas, beautiful opinions. But if you are close-minded and you are not open to new ideas, you are not going to learn. So be open-minded. You don't know it all. Nobody knows it all. I don't know it all. This is the way I feel. Somebody can come and say, ah, look at it all. This way. What about this way? What about... It's about presentation and it's about the way people... Sometimes people will be close to, you know, 
uh, whatever suggestion you are bringing because of the way you present it. Some people are so abusive, they don't know how to communicate. So they want to say something because they've cussed you out and say, I mean, use some very abuse, abusive words. You tune out, you don't want to listen. But there are some other people genuinely out there, majority of people will speak their truth, they will be honest, they will tell you, oh, look at it this way, what about this way, what about this way? That way you will learn. So me personally, I believe in being open-minded. If you're a YouTuber, you need to be open-minded because you learn. You know, by me being open minded in real life as well, whatever business you want to do, whatever venture you want to do, you need to be open minded because nobody knows it all. There are other people out there who have better ideas, you know, other methods that might work faster or easier for whatever you want to do. So it's always good to be very open minded. If you're close minded, you can't learn anything. That means you know it all. You, nobody can teach you anything, you know it all. And those people who are close minded that never agree that they can learn. Ah. They stagnate because you cannot grow quickly if you are not open-minded. So being open-minded is very, very important. I don't mind anybody coming to put their ideas here. Or I always say join the conversation. But all I ask is be respectful. I'm not going to abuse you. Don't abuse me. If you put a cuss word on my comment on my comment section, or you cuss me out, or you abuse me, then I will delete you, and then I will block you respectfully. <laughs> I will delete you respectfully and block you respectfully because Amos 3.3 3 is my favorite chapter. It's my favorite uh, Bible verse and it said two, two cannot walk together. I said they agree. So we will disagree respectfully. I will delete you respectfully. That's me. Yeah. So just speak your truth and that's it and be open-minded. And then final one, my seventh point is have fun with it. I love this one. I have fun with it. I like having fun. I'm a fun-loving person. I mean... Most of you who've been here for uh, a, a number of months know that I love having fun. I go out, you know, just have fun. I believe that anything you're doing in life that you cannot have fun is uh, is going to be painful. And it will not last long because you cannot have fun with it. I know, you know, so just have fun with it. Whatever you're doing, like especially this YouTube that we're doing now, have fun with it. Yeah, I laugh. Don't be too serious. Sometimes laugh. I laugh so much that somebody came and put a comment and said, Meet this woman, your fake laugh. Why? <laughs> That one too made me laugh. <laughs> because some people have no sense of humor. And when they come across people like us who can see humor in, there's nothing I cannot see humor in. That's just me. I mean, people know me. Even my children say, Mommy, you, you are so funny. I find humor, I can find humor in any circumstances. That's me. Because I always like to look at the funny side, to look at the flip side of things and to look at the fun or the part of it that will at least. Because I find that humor, you know, it, it just makes things a bit easier. It, it just, even if a situation is tense, when people laugh, they will forget the tension. The tension will ease out and, you know, you can think again. So, have fun with it. I have fun on my YouTube. I do a lot of funny, funny videos. If I have so many funny, funny ones coming up, uh, and I try to infuse a bit of uh, humor in whatever uh, blog that I'm doing, uh, sometimes I'm very serious, but in most cases, I like to have fun with it. So, it's very, really, really, really important that you have fun with it. So those are the seven things I have learned on YouTube going uh, past one year. Now it's been one year and these are the seven things that I've learned doing YouTube. I hope uh, you've enjoyed this video and um, thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed, do ensure that you hit on that red button down there. If you click on the bell sign, it tells you whenever I upload my videos and give me a thumbs up. I'm trying now. I, I, I'm trying. I am trying. If I can say so myself. Thank Give you very much, much, guys, for watching. I love you. Bye bye. Bye. We believe in God the Father. We believe in Jesus Christ. We believe in the Holy Spirit.